If you have a lateral pelvic tilt and want to fix it as fast as Chris did, then stick around to learn the three steps he went through and how you can copy them at home. Adam from trainingmassage.com and this is a story about a client I had about a year ago named Chris and what we did to improve his lateral pelvic tilt in only three days. You see, after a recent surgery that Chris went through and some failed medication that he was given, he was still having a bunch of pain in his lower back that was shooting down his leg. And it wasn't until he saw a physical therapist who informed him that he had a lateral pelvic tilt about two inches in difference that could be creating his pain. And what's even worse, at least to me because I'm an impatient asshole, is that she said it was going to take three sessions a week for 24 weeks for him to see improvements. That's six months if you haven't done the math yet. And before he wanted to commit to these three sessions with the physical therapist, plus two more sessions with the chiropractor and another one with a massage therapist, he decided he needed a small vacation. And living in Arizona, he was only a six hour drive from San Diego. But unfortunately, six hours of driving left him in even more pain than he began with, which is when he called me for an in-home session. After meeting with Chris and hearing his backstory, we started off with some basic assessments, not only for lateral pelvic tilt, but other problems that might go along with it, like range of motion issues. These tests included a hands-on test to gauge his pelvis, a modified Thomas test, a hamstring flexibility test, and a movement assessment consisting of squats. Then there are two assessments you can start on right now to begin your assessments and your own treatment. The first one is going to be a simple selfie where you're gonna take a picture of the hips with your hand on them in order to gauge your lateral pelvic tilt. Step one is to place the camera on a surface area level with your hips. Step two is to locate the ASIS, which is on the front hip bones next to the pocket. And then step three is to put on a timer for your camera, tuck in your shirt, and take a picture with your tip to the finger on the ASIS bones. And what this is gonna do is show you an image if your hips are uneven and which one is higher based on where your fingers are placed. Now, a quick side note, if it is hard to tell which one is higher because they kind of look even or there's like a small little gap, this probably isn't your biggest concern here. We don't really care about the centimeters and all that. We're not doctors performing specific studies. We're just trying to get a before and an after based on the images and how we feel with it as well. Now, the other assessment you can perform here is a modified Thomas test. Lay on your back on a table with your feet planted and your knees bent. Now from here, pull your left leg into your stomach to flatten your back as you drop your right leg down so that the hamstring is able to touch the table. Now if your lower back arches or if your hamstring is not able to touch the table, then that is considered a positive test for a short psoas muscle, which may be contributing to your lateral pelvic tilt. So after going through these tests with Chris, here were the results. He had a higher pelvic tilt on his left side, which indicated a tight quadratus lumborum on the left side, tight adductors on the left side, and then a tight glute medius and a tight psoas on the right side. This also means all the muscles opposite to what I just said are also going to be considered weak and we're going to work on those later on for the treatment. But first, we have to start by releasing all those shortened and tight muscles. And the best way to do that is with self-massage because self-massage is going to help you not only break up those faster restrictions within the muscles, it's also going to help relax the muscles so that we can then stretch them out and then exercise those other muscles in order to realign our pelvis. Now, I can't show you the video footage from the session because it was over a year ago and it has been deleted since then. But all that means is we can jump straight into the techniques that you can do at home. The first muscle is the quadratus lumborum, which is located in the deep lower back and to the side area region, basically. Now, to get into this muscle, I do like to use a smaller ball up against the wall, but to get into the deeper regions, I will start off usually at a 45 degree angle in order to get deeper. Once I'm there, I'll then shift my body so my back is now Flat, uh, flush against the wall and then I press in against it to get a little deeper and add some pressure. And besides this, you can also use a massage cane as well to get into the quadratus lumborum. Just go at it at a similar angle. 
Now from here, your goal is to work this muscle for roughly one to three minutes, breaking it up between these three techniques. First one is going to be static pressure, where your goal is to simply hold static pressure on the most tender spot while you take big deep breaths in and out using your stomach. The next technique is going to be micro movements. Once again, find the most tender spot, but now you're simply going to be moving back and forth and side to side on that one tender spot to hit the areas around it. And the final one is going to be a pin and stretch where you can simply lift that same leg up and either cross it over or lift it up and pull it in in order to move that muscle around. Or you can flex the body opposite direction in order to stretch it out as well. Regardless of whichever one you want to do, once again, you'll be releasing this muscle for roughly one to three minutes. Now the next muscle you want to release is going to be the glute medius, which is going to be on the opposite side of the QL you just released. In order to release this muscle, you're going to want to lay on your side with a self massage tool underneath your hips. You're basically going to be working the lateral side of the hips, which is where the glute medius is located. You can again perform one of these three techniques for one to three minutes or a combination of any of them. You can either perform some static pressure on the most tender spot, you can perform some micro movements, or once again a pin and stretch by moving that bottom leg in and out and all around in order to stretch that muscle out. The next muscle we're gonna be releasing is the psoas, which is our deep hip flexor muscle, the same one we just tested with the modified Thomas test. To release this muscle, start by laying on your back with your feet planted and your knees in the air. Now, from here, you're gonna start at the belly button and you're gonna move down and to the side in order to get into your starting position. From here, take a small ball and a yoga block and then gently press into the muscle in order to begin accessing this psoas. Now, in order to see if you're on the muscle, you can lift up that same side leg and if you feel that muscle pop up underneath that self-massage tool, the small ball, then you know you're on the muscle. Now, once you find that muscle, we can again perform these three techniques, either static pressure by finding the most tender spot and then holding pressure while taking big deep breaths you can perform some micro movements by moving back and forth and side to side on it. Or you can perform some pin and stretching by sliding down that same leg as that muscle is pinned down. Once that leg gets all the way down, release that pin, reset, repin it, and then once again, you can stretch that leg out. And the final muscle that we're gonna be releasing is the adductors on the higher side of the hip hike. This muscle is on the inside thigh, so it's best to work it by laying flat on the floor with your leg out at a 90 degree angle. From here, you're gonna place your massage tool up close near the growing area, but on the thigh in order to really work and release this muscle. Now from here, you can actually perform four different techniques instead of three. We can either first perform some deep rolls where we're going back and forth on the entire muscle very slowly. We can then perform a static pressure technique, some micro movements, or a pin and stretch by moving that leg back and forth and flexing and extending it. Regardless of which one you wanna do, make sure to be working this muscle for roughly one to three minutes. Now, once I was done massaging all these muscles on Chris, we then stretched them out for roughly one to two minutes. And here is how you can do them at home. Start in a standing position with your feet wide apart. Now from here, point one foot to the side as you lean to that same side. Bend that knee you're leaning into while keeping the back leg straight. Now raise your arm over your head to help stretch that QL and hold it for roughly 30 to 60 seconds. It may help you to stretch that QL just a little more by focusing on pivoting on your QL, your obliques basically, which will help you stretch that area a little better. Now staying in that same exact position, we're now going to jump into the adductor stretch. All you're doing here is simply leaning to that same side, but now you're focusing on stretching that leg that is straightened out by pushing those hips down towards the floor. Your arms can be by your side or on your hips, wherever they're comfortable. Regardless of where they are, make sure to stretch this muscle out for 30 to 60 seconds. The next muscle is the glute medius. Now to stretch out the glute medius, we need to start off in a staggered stance with the glute medius we are targeting in the back position on the back leg basically. Now from here, all you're going to do is lean forward a bit and then push your hips out to that same side in order to begin stretching that glute medius. 
It will also help if you shift your legs into the same line, same position, as opposed to being staggered, because then that's gonna help push those hips inward, which will put them on a stretch even more. You may also want some balance for this, but as you're stretching it out, make sure to hold it for roughly 30 to 60 seconds. Now, very similar to the glute medius, we're gonna start off in a staggered stance, but this time we're gonna shift our weight forward as we shift our pelvis into a neutral position. This is gonna help stretch out that front psoas muscle that's on the back leg, basically. So the back leg psoas is the muscle we are stretching. Now from here, you can simply squeeze those glutes if you wanna get a tighter stretch, or you can lift your arm up and reach over to stretch it out a little more. Once again, stretch this muscle out for 30 to 60 seconds. Now on top of some stretches, I highly recommend performing some mobility drills as well to help passively move our pelvis back into a more neutral position. The first one we're reforming is what's called a sideline sacrum stretch, basically, where all we're gonna be doing is basically pulling our legs in opposite directions in order to help shift them back to a more neutral position. Now from here, you're gonna pull the bottom knee into your chest while you take the top foot, the top leg's foot, and pull it behind your back. Now from here, you're simply going to either hold this stretch for 30 to 60 seconds. If holding the stretch is a little too much, then you can also simply pull it for a few seconds and then let it go, and then do that as a repetition for roughly a minute. Now this next mobility drill is designed to kind of help you reset your pelvis basically, quote unquote. It doesn't always work for everybody and you may not feel or hear anything, but it is a nice little way to kind of try to realign our pelvis here. What you want to do is start on your back with your feet planted and your knees in the air. Now from here, you're going to take your lower side hip, you're going to take that leg up and you're going to pull it into the chest. You're then going to take the other leg and push it away towards the ground. But here's the catch. You're going to be using your hands in order to prevent that push and that pull. As in, you're basically performing an isometric contraction, one pulling and one going the opposite direction. Now, if this is a little too hard for your hands, you can also use a stick here where you place it in front of the knee that's going towards the chest and you place it behind the knee of the leg that's going away. Now from here, you're gonna push and pull at the same time. And if you do this correctly, the bar should remain relatively neutral as opposed to getting pulled in one direction or another. Now, as you do this, go ahead and do it a few times. And if you hear a pop, great. If not, don't worry about it. We're gonna move on to the exercises. Do this for roughly seven to 10 seconds, two to three sets. Now, the final steps I took with Chris was to help him exercise those opposite muscles that we haven't worked on yet. By doing this at the very end, all those muscles that were tight and creating that lateral pelvic tilt are now relaxed and stretched out, which makes exercising those other muscles 10 times easier. The first muscle we're gonna be training is the lower side quadratus lumborum. Start by laying on your back with your feet planted and your knees in the air. Now, from here, you're gonna be sliding your back against the floor while reaching for your foot. You should only be doing this on the lower side of the pelvis. Once you crunch as low as you can, reset and then repeat for 40 to 60 reps, taking as many sets as you need. You can also do this exercise in a standing position as well, but you will need a band anchored to a high point in the house or wherever you're at. What you wanna do is take that band into your hand with a straight arm and have it in the band with some tension. From here, you're simply going to lean to the side, pushing that hand down to the floor, hold for a few seconds and then let it return before you once again repeat for 40 to 60 reps. The key here for making sure you are flexing the quadratus lumborum is to make sure you're not pushing down with the hands or you're pulling down with the hands here, but you're using the quadratus lumborum to flex, which then pulls the hand down towards the feet. So start the movements from the QL and then let the hands follow basically. The next exercise is for that glute medius on the higher side of the pelvis. And we can do this by performing a simple exercise called hip abduction. What you wanna do is start by laying on the floor on your side with a small band wrapped around the ankles. Now from here, you're simply gonna lift that leg up 
hold for a few seconds, then let it return before you repeat for 40 to 60 reps, taking as many sets as you need. Now, a little more advanced exercise for the glute medius is going to be a single leg deadlift while pressing into the wall. Here's what it looks like. What you want to do is take a foam roller or a yoga block between your hips and the wall and it's going to be the opposite hip of the one you're training so if you're training your left glute that's going to be the one away from the wall and the right glute is going to be closer from here you're going to lift that leg up so now you're only on the left leg and then you're simply going to perform deadlifts while pressing in with the glutes what this is doing is forcing the glutes to squeeze in towards the wall in order to keep that foam roller or that yoga block there. And then you're also performing deadlifts, which also engages this muscle as well. Regardless of whichever exercise you wanna do, make sure you're doing 40 to 60 reps, taking as many sets as you need. So next up is training the psoas on the higher side. And we're gonna be doing that with an exercise called marching or something like that. The idea of this exercise is to simply lift that leg that you're training up to at least 90 degrees in order to begin engaging that psoas. But you usually want some resistance with this. And you can do this by either placing a kettlebell on that same side foot. You can use a mini band wrapped around it where you're stepping on the mini band and then you're lifting it up with that same leg in order to provide some resistance. Or you can even do this on the floor where you're pulling in from a band in a horizontal position. Regardless of whichever one you wanna do, make sure your core is nice and tight and you're performing 40 to 60 reps, taking as many sets as you need. Now the final muscle we're gonna be training are the adductors on the lower side. And this exercise is basically the opposite of the glute medius where we're now performing adduction as opposed to abduction. In order to perform this exercise, you're gonna to wanna to do it in a standing position with a band anchored to the wall. Now from here, you're simply going to step away from the band to provide some resistance. And then from here, you're gonna hold stationary on that leg while you squeeze your adductors to bring your leg in closer. From here, you're gonna hold that position for a few seconds, let the band gently pull you out, and then once again, squeeze that band back in, performing 40 to 60 reps. This is basically the blueprints I use for helping Chris out with his lateral pelvic tilt. And after working on them for 90 minutes each session, here are the results. Within the first session, his back pain practically vanished and he was able to walk normally. And then after the third session, we were able to not only see a better alignment in his pelvis and his leg leg discrepancy, but his average range of motion increased by 20 degrees with the biggest one being his right hamstring by increasing by roughly 45 degrees. And I do believe it's because we had a tight psoas on that side, which was limiting his hamstring flexibility. Now listen, I know it's kind of hard for me to prove a lot of this because I don't have a lot of video, but let's be real, it's kind of weird to go into someone's house when you do in-home sessions and you have a video camera there with lights and all that. I'm not there to take a video, I'm there to work on them. Look, I want you to stop filming me. But what happened with Chris was I worked on him for one session and he saw such great results that we booked multiple sessions while he was on his vacation. And that's when I asked him if we could do a small little case study on him. Now I did reach out to Chris after working on him for over a year ago, and I'm glad to say that he is doing better than ever. But I can't sit here and take full credit for all this because he still continued to see his personal trainer. He still continued to see a massage therapist, a chiropractor and everything after he left San Diego. But I do believe I was able to help him get a head start and avoid waiting six months to see any results.